If you want a snapshot of how European navies are trying to stay relevant in a battle space shaped by drones, long-range missiles, and invisible cyber pressure, look at what Italy just signaled with Frem Evo. This is not a flashy next-generation destroyer announcement, not a blank sheet design meant to impress parliaments and headlines. It is something arguably more consequential, a proven frigate hull being rebuilt around the realities of modern threat chains, where the first attack might be a software exploit, the second a swarm of one-way drones, and the third a sea-skimming missile launched from well beyond the horizon. Italy's Frem Evo program has now passed its critical design review, and that matters more than it sounds. In naval procurement, a CDR is the moment you stop debating in PowerPoint and accept that the interfaces, margins, wiring routes, cooling capacity, software architecture, and support concept are mature enough to cut steel without gambling the schedule on late-stage redesign. When Ocar says the platform, combat system, and the whole warship, logistics included, cleared CDR, it is a statement that the ship is no longer an aspiration. It is a defined weapon system, with deliveries still targeted for June 2029 and June 2030, and that timeline is itself a message. Italy is betting that the threat environment won't wait for perfect ships, only for ships that can be built, upgraded, and networked on time. So why evolve the Bergamini-class Frem instead of launching a new class entirely? Because the strategic problem is not theoretical anymore. Italian sailors have watched the Eastern Mediterranean and the Red Sea become laboratories for modern strike tactics cheap drones looking for soft spots, cruise missiles probing gaps in radar coverage and reaction time, and undersea risks expanding from submarines to seabed infrastructure vulnerabilities. The modern sea fight is not just ship versus ship, it is ship versus a system, and that system includes sensors, networks, electronic warfare, satellites, and the cyber layer that ties it together. In that environment, a good enough now adaptable later hull becomes a strategic asset. The baseline frame is already a solid foundation for that philosophy. It is a 144.6 meter frigate with cod lag propulsion, gas turbine power for speed, electric motors for quiet running, built to move between high tempo task group operations and stealthy anti-submarine patrols. Quiet electric mode is not a marketing line. It is the difference between being the hunter and being the detectable target when submarines are in play. Add a double helicopter hangar and you get endurance and reach the ability to extend sensors and weapons beyond the ship's own horizon. That is the platform Italy chose to preserve because changing the hull is expensive, slow and risky. The smarter move is to modernize what sits on top of it and inside it. The sensors, the combat system, the electronic warfare, the power distribution and the cyber resilience that determines whether the ship can fight at all. This is where Frem Evo becomes tactically interesting. Italy is pairing the hull with a cyber-resilient ship management system on the platform side and a cyber-resilient combat management system, SADOC 4, on the combat side. That sounds bureaucratic until you consider a blunt question. What happens if the ship's brain is degraded before the first missile is even launched? Modern warships are floating data centers. Their radar, weapons, radios, navigation, damage control, and propulsion monitoring are deeply digital. If an adversary can confuse sensors, corrupt data, or force manual fallbacks at scale, they compress your decision cycle, and at sea, seconds are not convenience, they are survival. Cyber resilience is no longer an IT requirement, it is combat power. Then there is the radar upgrade, and it hints at the kind of fight Italy expects. A fixed-face dual-band ESA suite, often referenced in the context of Leonardo's Kronos family, points to a ship designed to manage dense air pictures and engage complex threats, potentially including ballistic missile defense-related detection and tracking functions. Dual band is not about raw range alone, it is about solving different parts of the problem at once. One band helps with volume search and long-range queuing, another with precision tracking and fire control quality data. In practical terms, it is the difference between seeing something early and being able to guide a weapon onto it reliably while electronic warfare, clutter, and decoys are trying to break your lock. If the last decade taught navies anything, it is that the air threat is no longer a single inbound missile. It is a layered puzzle of missiles, drones, and deception arriving together. And that brings us to what might be the most revealing aspect of the EVO concept, counter-drone capability treated as a dedicated mission, not an afterthought. Drones have changed maritime defense because they attack the economics of readiness. A ship can carry a limited number of expensive missiles. An attacker can produce a large number of cheap drones. Even if every drone is individually unimpressive, the saturation effect forces defenders into bad trades, burning interceptors, exhausting crews, and creating openings for the real strike package. So the question becomes, how do you build a defensive bubble that does not collapse under volume? Italy's apparent answer is layering and flexibility. You see references to an evolved electronic warfare suite oriented toward countering drones, 
plus a dedicated counter UAS package that emphasizes detection, identification, and soft kill effects. Soft kill is critical because it preserves hard kill ammunition for what truly demands it. If you can jam, spoof, or otherwise degrade a drone's guidance, you win without spending a missile. But soft kill alone is not enough, because not everything is jammable and not every drone is fragile. That is why the gun layer matters, and Frem Evo appears to lean into rapid reaction artillery options. The 7662nd Strail system with guided dart ammunition for fast, precise engagements and potentially 30mm remotely operated mounts using airburst rounds for close in defeat of small drones and fast craft. The point is not any single system, it is the architecture that allows the ship to choose the cheapest effective response in the moment without hesitating, without drowning in sensor noise, and without losing track of the bigger air picture. While air defense and counter drone are grabbing attention, underwater lethality remains the backbone of a NATO frigate in the Mediterranean. FREM's ASW identity is built on quiet propulsion, a hull sonar, and a variable depth sonar system in the Captus family, supported by embarked helicopters and lightweight torpedoes. That is a complete chain, detect, classify, track, localize, prosecute, and the value of that chain is increasing, not decreasing. Submarines are not going away, they are becoming quieter. They are operating alongside seabed infrastructure vulnerabilities, and they benefit from the same networked intelligence environment as surface forces. If Italy is keeping the ASW suite and strengthening the combat system and data links, it is effectively saying, we expect the underwater contest to be a persistent, high-stakes part of future operations, not a niche scenario. Now step back and consider what this means politically and industrially. The Frem Evo order was placed through a contract amendment signed in July 2024, with the system design review completed in May 2025, culminating in the CDR announced in December 2025. The program's estimated value of around 1.5 billion euros positions it as a core piece of Italy's broader naval renewal strategy. That is not just procurement, it is force structure logic. Europe does not have infinite shipbuilding capacity or unlimited budgets. Programs that can reuse hulls, mature supply chains and existing training pipelines have an advantage. They produce credible combat power earlier and they reduce the risk of fielding a perfect ship too late for the threat environment it was designed to face. And what is that threat environment? It is one where NATO task groups operate under persistent surveillance, where strike weapons are increasingly cheap relative to the platforms they target, where the electromagnetic spectrum is contested by default, and where the line between wartime attack and peacetime sabotage is blurred in cyber and on the seabed. In that world, a frigate is not judged by how impressive it looks on a brochure, but by how well it sustains high power demands, how reliably it manages data and sensors under pressure, and how economically it defeats massed mixed threats without running out of options. So the real question is not whether Frem Evo is better than the original Frem. The real question is whether this approach, evolving proven hulls with cyber-hardened systems, modern AESA sensors, and counter-drone layers, becomes the template for the next decade of European naval power. Because if Italy is right, the future does not belong to the rare, exquisite warship that can do everything in theory. It belongs to the adaptable warship that can fight through disruption, integrate into allied networks, and survive the first chaotic minutes of a modern strike. Deliveries in 2029 and 2030 might sound far away, but shipbuilding timelines are unforgiving, and the design choices being locked today will define how Italy and NATO operate at sea in the 2030s. The idea is simple, and that is why it is dangerous. Take a hull that already works and rebuild its nervous system for a new era of threats. The only question left is whether adversaries move faster than those upgrades can arrive, or whether this kind of incremental hard-edge modernization is exactly what keeps the balance from tipping.